Psalms chapter 85 to the chief musician. A psalm for the sons of Korah. Again, the, the priestly family of uh, Levite. This is, a, this is a good psalm, a happy psalm, a praising God psalm. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. That should be a red flag. That is not America. That is Israel. When you read land, 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 that is to the Jew, the land of Palestine, which is rightfully, besides whoever wants to do wrongfully, called Israel. Favorable to thy land, what? Giving them crops, giving them uh, health, giving them uh, children, giving them everything on that land to grow. Everything that the land produces, God has blessed them. We just read about with with Elijah in the time of Ahab, famine, no food. A woman goes out and picks up two sticks. That's all she could find. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Well, guess what? They went into captivity for their sin. That's what the, that's what the Psalms we've been reading about. Rebelling against God. Now they repented and got right. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Remember, we're in an Old Testament book. This is not worldwide salvation. Everybody doesn't get saved. Thy people, the Jews. Now, Gentiles were allowed to come in. And I've got to apologize because I realize I may have said something in previous recordings that I need to get right right now is I said maybe, you know, before Abraham, they went to Abraham's bosom. But how can they go to a place where Abraham had not gone yet? Where did everybody go before Abraham's bosom became? Don't know. But after Abraham was settled, and then when he went down into the place, and it was called Abraham's bosom, Luke 16, there are Jews in there. All right, when you get Naaman the Syrian, and you, you get uh, Nebuchadnezzar, which I believe got saved, not by, you know, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but as far as obeying God, were they in Abraham's bosom? See, there's a lot of questions in the Bible we don't know. And with studying, we'll find the answers. If not, we'll get in glory and find out. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. See love. There's coming a time later on that God will give Israel a new heart, a new spirit, and they will never sin again. Now, God had made it washed away their sins at this point in time, but they're going to sin again. And they're going to have the Messiah come walk in their city, and they're going to reject him by saying, crucify him. That Jew's heart is not perfect. It's not right. God says about the Jew, you're stiff-necked. But one day, if there's anybody who's against anybody, it's the world against the Jew. And I've really, I've only known a few Jewish people in my life, but I'm told that you know they're stubborn. They're and the ones I've known, they weren't like that, but. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Well, what was the rap? Leaving the land. Captivity. The enemy's coming in. Death. Famine. Those things are, could be the wrath of God. Now, you're going to be idiots like that church there that goes around protesting all the funerals on that. Those are idiots. So if I were to stand on a street corner with a King James Bible who loves the Lord and wants to do right and say, hey, listen, you know, these earthquakes and all that, they are the wrath of God or could be the wrath of God. Then they're going to look at me as a heretic like those bunch of other idiots. Satan is smart.
But let's get it down to the fact is no rain and all that that you read in time of Elijah. When you read that the, uh, Babylon came and destroyed everything. Titus came in and destroyed everything in Israel. That is the wrath of God because they disobeyed God. And, they, and for Titus, they killed his son and would not receive him. And denied that they killed him all through the book of Acts. That Selah is a time that's coming up later. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath, for thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. So God does not want to be angry with you all the time. Yes, God will get the paddle out and beat your buns, even the Hebrew says, for the born-again Christian. We are his sons, but he doesn't want to do it forever. As any parent who loves their children, they don't even want to do it at all. Proverbs gives saying, listen, don't, don't hear to their crying. You're not going to kill them. You're going to give them steps to get out of hell. God knows how hard it is to whip our children, but it's needful. And God understands how hard it is to whip a son when he placed his son on that cross that night, that day. When the, when, the, when the sky got dark and sin became upon him and Jesus Christ was put into hell. That was the wrath of God. Upon who? Us, through Jesus. What did Jesus do to go to hell? Nothing. He was sinless. But he had our sins upon him. So God's anger is not forever if you repent and get right. Truly repent. Turn us. That's repent. O God of our salvation. And cause thy anger towards us to cease. See, turn us. God's anger is not going to come when you do right. You know you could do everything Satan wants you to do and he'll he'll cast you off in the lake of fire. You can sign your contract with Satan. You can do everything you want and bring all the teenagers, all the young people, all the people into sin and death and into hell. And you'll still end up with hell. There'll be forever no mercy, no grace. I said no mercy and no grace. And it's not the wrath of Satan. It never is. It is the pleasure of Satan that you will burn and be uh, in torments forever. How about that? God is not willing to any perish. God is long-suffering. God has provided a way. You know, up to the point when you... Just before you are cast in the lake of fire, God wants you saved. But at that point when you die, and you die rebelling against God and not doing what God told you, and then when you are cast off in the lake of fire, when that's your internal doom, God's long-suffering ends. You are now under the judgment and sentence of the Holy God. That gave you April opportunity. Aiken. You know, all night long, God gave Aiken the opportunity to come up and go knock on Joshua's tent. Joshua, I got to talk to you. Oh, man, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. What do you want? I got to talk to you. What? See, if you read the Bible, Joshua had no idea. Uh, Joshua, I stole a... Uh, Silver, gold, and a Babylonian garment. That's what the God, that's what God's angry with. All night, read it. It said, then the next day, then they brought the tribe, then they brought the family, and then they Let me ask you a question. If Achan would have confessed his sin to Joshua and Joshua woke up the priest and all that, you think God would have had him stoned? And his family? 
He said, well, why his family? Well, they, some of them knew. Maybe. But God meant it serious. Will thou be angry with us forever? That's a good question. Is God angry with a man that goes in the lake of fire? Or is it a sentence of judgment? When we get into eternity and everything's weighed out, all the judgments are gone, all that, are we going to see an angry God? I don't think so. After the, sense, after the sentence of the lake of fire, I don't think we're going to see an angry God. I think we're going to see a God that's satisfied. Just, justice has been proclaimed. It would have been a lot better if you would have put justice proclaimed in Jesus Christ. Or getting in the ark. Or not eating that tree. Wilt thou draw out thy anger to all generations? What did God say about the second commandment? Those that have idols, fourth and fifth generation. You know what's wrong with the Roman Catholic Church? It's passed on from parents, from grand, from grandparents, from great great grandparents, from great 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 grandparents, great 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 grandparents. You are grown up and and bared up in that religion. My parents were not Roman Catholics, but yet Grandpa brought me up to be a Roman Catholic. I found the Roman Catholic Church before I was saved. It was boring. But guess where I ran to before I got saved when I got in trouble and all that? And I wonder where, what would be going on with this family if I didn't get saved. We might have been to Easter, Christmas, but Satan would make sure that that Roman Catholicism that I grew up in, that was in my grandparents, was in my great-great-grandparents, would have been alive and well. Will thou not receive us again? Of course he will. When you repent and get right, that thy people may rejoice in thee. Well, take verse 6 with Ezra and Nehemiah. Did God not receive them? Did not revive us? We want a revival. Everyone's crying out down here. We want a revival, but we still want to mention Easter. We want a revival, but we still want the eggs. We want a revival, but we still want the Christmas tree. We want the revival, but we still want to worship the sunrise service, which all things, we want a revival, but... When we read the Bible and find out it's wrong, we have not repented. And when you read Revelation chapter 3 and what this church age is, show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Do you think it's going to be a great revival when the Lord Jesus Christ picks up those Jews down in Salem Petra? Their Messiah? I will hear what God the Lord will speak. Churches don't do that today. They change what God speaks. And if they don't have a Bible that changes the word... They'll get up in that pulpit and change it with the Hebrew and Greek or their stupidity. What do you do? I will hear what the Lord God speak. <clears throat> then he goes out in the woods, he cuts it down, he bears it so it will not, and he puts silver and gold on that. That's an abomination. That's a work of the heathen. And you walk in the church <coughs> and they got a Christmas tree. They're not listening. Easter is Estar. Estar is a god, a female goddess. God says don't even make mention of their names. Happy Easter. 
Happy Easter. We're going to have an Easter service. We're going to have an Easter cantata. Easter service times this Sunday. You won't even do what God says. You got stuff going on in church. The Bible says you're to de-church the people. Oh, no, don't want to do that. I will hear what the what the what I will hear what God the Lord will speak. No, not today. Sorry. For He will speak peace unto His people. They got the peace. They want to speak the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oh, floaty li lilies and flowery dresses with with artificial butterflies and just. Woo but they forgot to hear what God spoke to them. And to his saints. Well, that's funny. How can God speak to a dead man? According to a church that says saints are dead people. But let them not turn again to folly. Turn again to folly. That's a... That's a Unrepentant, if you can instead of say repent, that's an unpent. That's turn away from God. And he says, turn again. In other words, we've already turned to wickedness. We've come back. And let us not go back to the wickedness. And they do, and man does. For all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The only way you're not going to return to your folly is when they put you in a box and lower you in the ground. You'll never sin again upon death or the rapture. Surely his salvation. Whose? Salvation belongs to God. It's not yours. It's nigh to them that fear him. Now, our salvation is signed, sealed, and delivered, not theirs. There is a difference. You better not listen to a guy who says there's no dispensation. Or it's all the same. Don't go to jail and witness the people. Don't get, a, don't get a guy who's about to be put to the death penalty for murder. Don't witness to him if, if all the dispensations are the same because a murderer will go right to hell. That's not true in this age. For all have sinned. Christ died for all. Take away the sin of the world. That glory may dwell in our hearts. It's not what it says. Be careful when a preacher says... Oh, claim every promise in the Bible. Name it, claim it. A Christian is not interested in land. Well, even though some I'm talking about a born again Bible believing Christian that loves the Lord is not interested in the land. The Jews are. We are interested in lost souls and souls that get saved to train up to go after lost souls. Some Christians are going to cry baby and chain themselves to cement pillars when the rapture happens because they're not going to want to go. And they may not go because they may not be a Christian. Jesus said, said, set thy afflictions on things on above, not things on the earth. So Jesus' words changed the dispensation of the Jew. A born-again Jew today does not get the new earth. He does not get a land grant. He gets New Jerusalem. Can you imagine that? Uh, uh, now listen, now look, at the, look at the reason with this. If a Jewish Israeli person believes in the Lord Jesus Christ today as his Savior, he is completely rejected by every Jewish community family business. All they will, will die and, and go into the lake of fire 
Here is a Jewish man now saved. There's no difference between Jew and Greek. He's a dead dog to his family. And he gets to go to New Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem was just for Judah and the priest. This born again Jew gets to, I mean, I hate to say the word Jews, it's always it's been such a bad light. But this born again Bible believing Jew that got saved gets to spend eternity right in front and gets to look like his Messiah. Now, that's not a kick in the pants. Mercy and truth are met together. That's God. That's never Satan. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That's what you want. You know, churches are trying to do that today, and it's, it's a mess. It's wickedness. It's without God. Truth shall spring out of the earth when the Lord Jesus Christ is seated, seated on David's throne in Jerusalem. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. You know, during the millennium, God's just going to watch the whole thing. Like God was watching Jesus' baptism. Wouldn't it be great? I don't know. I, I don't, can't find any passages about this. Just thinking off my top of my head. Wouldn't it be great to be living a thousand years of the millennium as Jesus Christ is, as the king? And those who, who serve the Lord have got... Cities to rain and wouldn't it be great just every once in a while just hear God speak from heaven? I am well pleased. I am well pleased in my son. Let all the world proclaim Jesus Christ right now, please. Wouldn't that be great? You know, I don't think Paul ever heard God's voice. God's voice, not Jesus. It would be great if we all heard that. Now, you don't have to take that. I don't know. I just think it would be wonderful to just hear God's voice from heaven like the Old Testament saints did. Like some of the, the people that followed Jesus. Was it two or three times God's voice spoke from heaven? I think it would be a wonderful thing. It says it sounds like thunder. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good. He never gives anything bad. You say, well, the Lord gave me cancer. That's not good. Yeah, but you were the idiot that was smoking. Well, I got a bad kidney. Yeah, but you, that's not good. But you're the idiot that was drinking. Well, the Lord took my child at an early age. Yeah, but you don't know anything what God knows. And then, I can't answer why, but I can tell you one thing. I know one thing about that child. It's with the Lord Jesus Christ right now. That's a whole lot better. I mean, would you rather have your child with Jesus right now and then going through life with a whooping cough and uh, catching the flu, the sneezles, the bruised knees. Getting hurt, getting his heart hurt for the first time or the first girlfriend and, and, and all the other things that go in life. And the thing about that child growing up to an age that maybe you've gone on to be with the Lord and suffering and pain and all. I mean, you know what Paul said? <laughs> Paul says, I'd rather, be, I'd rather be with the Lord right now, but needless to be good for you guys, i got to stay here. Paul says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. When a saint dies, that is good. 
and our land shall yield her increase. That's, that's a blessing of God. It wasn't yielding her increase when, when Elijah called for the famine. There was another famine that they were, they were sowing and eating dove's dung in a calf's head. The woman gathered two sticks to make one cake so her and her son can die. That's not good. That's because they were rebelling against God. Again, we're talking about in the land. We're talking about the Jews. You know what's not good? The Jews are not in the land today. The Jews, we just had Passover. They can't celebrate Passover with the way the scriptures say to them. Because there's no temple. And isn't it funny? I'm just thinking about this. The temple Solomon built, which prepared for Ezra and Nehemiah to, to rebuild, which Herod did change, is destroyed. Why has no Jews between 70 AD to today get on their knees and pray to God that at least we can build the old tabernacle of Moses? Why haven't they done that? Why can't they say well, there will be something in Jerusalem that we can go and do with them because they don't want to follow God? And not one Jew or, or a group of Jews in a synagogue has ever said, let's pray to God, at least, at least bring back that, the, 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 the skins and, and the sheets and all that. And may God approve that we rebuild the altar and will follow their directions according to what Moses wrote. They haven't done it because they don't want God. You think the Jews will leave America with the big finances they're making? You know the Jews did leave America? America would be bankrupt. Because the Jews would take over just like they did in Egypt. You know we may see Egypt, I mean excuse me, Exodus happening. You ever think about that? What if God started telling those Jews to start heading back to that promised land and they take this, the spoils of America? We've got a president of the United States right now, and all of them, I don't knock that God. And you can go to Florida or maybe California, I'm not sure about that, and you can go see the, the sorcery working and then ride the rides. Take your children. And you can go to Las Vegas and see the magicians working there. Pay a nice little ticket. And they'll show you all kinds of nice little gizmos and gadgets. Righteousness shall go before him. So what is righteousness when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back? It's that word that destroys the wicked. How about that? You mean Jesus Christ getting rid of the unrighteous, Jesus Christ pronouncing judgment upon the wicked, it says righteousness shall go before him. And shall set us in the way of his steps. Well, the second advent, we're, be, we're the ones following Jesus on horseback. He's going to pick up those Jews, if it's Petra. He's going to pick them up along the way. They're going to be following the Messiah. All against the Antichrist. How many people walked the steps of Jesus as he went to the cross? My Bible, I only read two. Two names are mentioned. Mary and John. They were there after the, I mean, when they took him down off the cross, John took him off, uh, of Aramis took him down and, 
and Nicodemus brought some spices and all that, but they followed his steps all through his walk. Lord, give us food. Lord, give us the healing. Lord, take you off this devil, you know? But when it came time for his need, for a little comfort and a little love and, and his time and his trials and all that, where were they? Peter stopped at the fire. The worldly fire. John brought Peter in. Trying to do a little adding in my head. Where were the other nine disciples? Nine, ten, eleven, yeah. Where were they? Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his return. 